Okay, so is the Incredible Book of Hypnotism a magic book? And is this Harry Potter? Well, okay, we already know this is Harry Potter. Don't ask stupid questions. <laughs> it's, it's already obviously Harry Potter. They're going to London, so it has to be Harry Potter. Yeah. You don't go to London town without it being Harry Potter. Harry Potter? Harry Potter! Okay, Harry Potter! Harry Potter! <laughs> Harry, Harry. Dogs, they're coming. They're coming your way. They'll be here soon. Hi everyone, I'm Boix. I'm Ilion. Sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. I have successfully... I thought you were going to say it is Ilya. I just... I have successfully I'm hypnotized Harry you. Paul. Harry <laughs> Potter! <laughs> Holy moon! Uh, well, Molly Mood, you're a horrible, nasty person. That's true, though. That's Fuck true. it is, yeah. Harry, Molly Moon, you're going to be a monster, Molly. You're a monster. You're a monster, <laughs> Harry. She is a monster. She's uh, a total monster. She's so, so evil. So we watched Molly Moon and the Incredible Book of Hypnotism, which is definitely yes. a dog movie. Um, which is based on a children's book series that uh, apparently was released, at least in the U.S., by Scholastic, uh, of the same name, involving mm -hmm. Molly Moon and six books of her being a terrible person, I assume. And they all, well, you know it's a dog movie, because all of the covers have a really, really cute pug on the front being hypnotized or wearing star shades or being a horrible Asian caricature. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like kids' books do. Like kids' books do. Uh, so, yeah. this movie has a lot of talent, somehow. Mm -hmm. It's shot competently well. Uh, like, very well, at some points. And... It's, it's got uh, The Hobbit. Not not that one. <laughs> yeah, not one. that Hobbit. No, oh, not, not the not other Hobbit. Either. No, yeah. the, mm, No, not that one. Yeah. Ooh, you're getting closer. <laughs> yeah. But, no, it's, but the, it's the fourth a, Hobbit. Hobbit. Yeah, it's yeah. The, it, it is the fourth Hobbit. But it's the Hobbit. Yeah, it's... You know, um, Mary from yes. from Lord of the Rings. That Hobbit. And and Lost. Charlie from Lost as well. I yeah. never made that connection, by the way, that it, Charlie from Lost is also the Hobbit in Lord of the Rings. Like, that just never clicked for <laughs> me. But, yeah, no, that's, that's yeah. the case. He looks way taller in other movies. <laughs> Fucking laughing. <laughs> Just go, go, get it out. Are you done? <laughs> no. Not you're, all right. We're ready, man. Just okay. Okay. No, you get the giggles so... out. Right? <laughs> so... Keep going. Just get it all out. Yep. Just... <sighs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, there's. <laughs> God, I can't fucking do this. There's, there's a lot of talent. There, there's, oh. his Chris Monahue is his name. I now I'm bad. I can't even remember his name. It's I Chris, don't know. Or Chris Maybe Donahue? that's his name. Monahue. He's Mary. Monahan. That's all I know. He's Mary. He's he's Mary uh, from Lord of the Rings. Dominic Monahue. Yeah. Monahan. Oh, it's Dominic. Yeah, Dom that's what it is. It's Dominic Monahue. I think. There's somebody yeah. else like or yeah. Yeah, uh, so we have Emily Watson, Dominic Monaghan, Joan Collins, who's in like a ton of old 60s and 70s shows and movies all the way up to today. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, there's a bunch of like yeah. actors and like a, the, a bunch of the actresses, you wouldn't necessarily know their names, but they're like big on like London theater circuits and yeah. also and like won a bunch of awards there. And also in like so many TV shows and movies that like every single person I was constantly like. I, I've seen that person. Like, I know that. Like, they're, they're that kind of person. Like, they've been in mm -hmm. as side characters in tons and tons and tons of movies, TV, whatever. And most of them are really good. Like, really good. There's some really well-read lines. Yeah. A lot, yeah. The, but the it shouldn't be for well this written. movie. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's what's I... weird. So, all right. So, I'm going to say, I, I'm going to throw this out there. 
this movie has a good plot, good actors, good like actors and actresses. Mm-hmm. It's got like really good set design. It's shot really well. The special effects are good. And it just all falls to fucking shit in the last 15 minutes, right? Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> Basically. Like, and and that... the the movie also has a 30% on Rotten Tomatoes, so it fits our that metrics. Feels unfair as hell though. I f- I don't think that's fair. I I didn't feel like this was a movie that deserved to really be on our podcast in a way. I was all ready to shit I on I felt this a little guilty we, about it, yeah. We stumbled ass backwards into this in that there was a really cute pug while we were looking for the movie to do today. Um, and we were watching a bunch of trailers to the point that I remember when we finished, you were like, okay, I'm going to need a break to go into the movie because we've seen yeah. so many bad trailers. <laughs> but we, we stumbled on this one and it... The synopsis of this film. Can you read the synopsis of this film again? I know Do it's I have it? Minute to oh. check it out. You had it on Amazon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I just want to read it. Let me... One second. I need to look it up again. Like, the, the synopsis of this film, though, we read something where it said, like, a bank robber steals this girl's dog, an orphan's dog, and she has to go to London to get it back. But she also had hypnosis powers, was in the synopsis that you read at one point. And that's wildly inaccurate to what this movie is, right? Hmm. Like, I mean, basically. It's, it's got that in it. It's not, those are there, but it doesn't feel like, was the dog the main focus of this? Like the kidnapping dog thing? That was the very end of this film. It... Yes. So, okay, there was a synopsis that mentioned the dog being stolen. Mm -hmm. So what we thought was going to happen was that a robber was going to break into the orphanage that Molly Moon is in, steal her dog, and then she had to go on a trip to London to get it back. So the reverse of the family moves away and the dog finds them, basically. Basically, yeah. Like, that he coincidentally grabbed this dog, or, like, the dog was a rare breed, yeah. or, I don't know, something like that. Like, the dog coincidentally jumped in his bag as he was stealing things, and now he's got the dog, and she has to go back, and... No! No, 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 no! This is... This is Molly Moon discovers that she's actually Damon from The Omen? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh... Her mutant powers... Her mutant yeah. powers awaken, and she uses them for evil. <laughs> That's the movie. <laughs> That's the movie. Yes. <laughs> I loved so much of this movie, because it just gets... She becomes a horrible monster, like, right away. Uh, yeah. She, so... Uh, ostensibly she's in an orphanage and it starts out extremely Harry Potter and the we thought that it was going to be like a knockoff Harry Potter like I'd never heard of this film I don't get it because it's got obviously like a budget and actors and stuff but like there must have been no marketing for it at all um and the cover of this is done in Harry Potter font like a hundred percent and the name of it is even it, it came out a like before Harry Potter even or like around the time of Harry Potter the books did they were so like, like 2002 not, 2003 yeah for the first so few yeah ripping them off like 2001 2002 is when they came out yeah. so it's like um Molly Moon and the incredible book of hypnotism yes which, like that sounds like a Harry Potter ripoff and the font is a Harry Potter ripoff yeah just and like the, the first book- Harry Potter book Harry Potter and the incredible lack of any sort of character in Harry Potter <laughs> <laughs> she she has a characterization in this movie actually oh she's and, fucking and it, devious but yes yeah, she's evil <laughs> the <laughs> i don't understand greedy and mean is what the characterization is uh so truly an idol truly an idol oh god it so it's like very <laughs> harry potter she's in an orphanage and it's like oh this is miss trinkleberry the person that looks after us and she likes us but the headmistress is evil and and wants to crush our spirits and stuff and it feels like you said like it was like 1930s, but then suddenly people show up with like yeah. cell phones and stuff. It's, but it's like very 1930s, awful orphanage that you would see in like an Annie stage production. 
basically, mm-hmm. right? Like, it's that yes. sort of exaggerated, we're orphans, we're in this rundown house, and one day someone's going to show up in a jalopy and take us home. <laughs> yeah, they're being, they're being fed fish stew with chicken fish, feet in it. Yeah, and it's, like... it's like fish head and chicken feet stew yeah yeah it's yeah, gross. yeah like just this nasty fucking shit and it's like again like we're making this sound bad but it, it and it's done very stereotypically but it's done well like it's set up really nicely yeah. and like shot well and uh so anyways this horrible headmistress is making them all eat shit and she's like sitting there eating really nice meals and she's got this amazing mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, apartment kind of thing above the orphanage where all the money goes obviously that kind of thing so very typical and classic republicans <laughs> <laughs> it's tories they're british come on oh get it my get day it. yes oh. my day <laughs> so the headmistress has the dog petulia also and that's petula. where the dog come, uh, petula, yeah. sorry petula that's where the dog comes in it's this really cute pug she mistreats these children horribly and at the same time molly and her friend are deciding to kind of you know they want to get out of here they want to get adopted all this kind of stuff she finds a talent show poster and the kid is really good at singing so it very quickly yes. becomes Harry Potter. If Harry Potter was a pop star, there's a lot of music in this. Harry Potter could have very easily been Hannah Montana in a different <laughs> time period. And this is that movie. If Harry Potter was Hannah Montana by using force and tricking people. Yes. But no, 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 no. That's not Eventually. fair. Using force and tricking people would actually imply like some kind of trick and intelligence no this is just using magic to crush their minds and spirits <laughs> and force them to do the things Look, that you want <laughs> every so once in a while every once in a while a professor x is born and they use that power to become pop idols, <laughs> to become pop idols. am i wrong <laughs> no no you're not the, the that she finds a book of ma- of hypnotism yeah. in a library at the same time that Mary the Hobbit walks in. V- yeah, he's very in really full small. Hobbit gear. Yeah, in full Hobbit yeah, gear, he's, really he's small. very small. Full, yeah, yeah. And hairy he goes, feet. I I, I yeah. need a book of magic to defeat Sauron, and she unfortunately <laughs> is the one that's chosen by the book though, because hypnotism books are actually magic and decide who gives gets the power. I guess. Yeah, yeah they're they're living artifacts mm-hmm. that choose people. To wreak havoc upon the world. <laughs> she she picked up this book and some the old person that wrote the book hypnotized the pages to make the pages choose new people. That that's how hypnotizing works, I'm, yes. I'm pretty sure that's what this this is. Yeah. But yeah, so she finds the magic book of hypnotism because she's special, I guess. And then she begins to destroy everyone's lives. Um Slowly but surely, yes, slowly as is expected. But she yeah. t- first finds the person that's making all of their horrible stew fish meals and makes her decide that she actually really likes Italy instead and teaches her how to cook. And then she starts cooking yep. nice meals. Well, she also hypnotizes the dog. Yeah. To not be mean anymore. Which yeah. was easy because the dog was really nice. It was this really cute it's little just, pug that was playing with It's a really with cute her. pug and it's got eyes popping out of its head. It doesn't look like it should be... A thing that's alive, like pugs are. <laughs> like, like pugs. <laughs> like, like yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a natural, yeah. unholy demon, like pugs are. Yeah. Well, so, so she was at the library, though, and at the same time, when Mary was there, he was actually going after her to get the book, though. Yes, yeah. Um, which is an important plot point, uh, because it doesn't really go anywhere, kind of, but it does, and it's fine. It'll, it'll, it'll make sense 45 to an hour minute, like, to an hour long later. <laughs> <laughs> way, 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 when way, way on the other side. Eventually. Of yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, Mary, um, before she goes home and starts practicing hypnotism uh, without a <laughs> proper <laughs> certification, <laughs> uh, she. <laughs> <laughs> she needs to get her doctor she... in hypnotism, and she just doesn't. <laughs> Molly just doesn't give a shit for the rules. We are actually going to get to yep. that, though. So, anyway. So, so, so she... uh, Mary sees that she has a Molly 
named hoodie on he's like molly huh what's over that way to somebody on the road oh that's the orphanage Mm -hmm. ah the 1930s orphanage (laughs) and then yeah he goes to the orphanage and breaks in uh the headmistress sees him is like what are you doing here Uh, i'm here for the job oh yeah okay here uh go bucket a bunch of shit out of the septic tank for me by hand which is yeah. not how septic tanks work, but sure. I, I yeah. feel like she was pulling a really good joke on him, but you know. I think it was a trick. Yeah, she was just fucking with yeah. him. But no, that's really... That uh, would be it? in the headmistress's yeah. wheelhouse too, because she's a horrible monster. Like, everybody in yeah. this film... Is, there's very few people in this movie that are not awful. Like, everybody's yeah. miserable. So, yeah, he breaks in and does that. At the same time, she'd been hypnotizing, like, the dog and then the woman that makes the, the, cook. the meals, yeah. the cook. Um, she, she does that beforehand. Oh, yeah, so, because the headmistress is just being a jerk, as usual, at the dinner table, after our cook has brought in a spaghetti with very stereotypical Italian music playing, uh... <laughs> Well, uh, I, I think mean, about she it. hypnotized her to be like, you just like Italy. Italy. And this is a you like, like eight-year-old yeah, idea okay. of what Italy is. And like, That's fair. Gives it into the mind of this poor lady who is now mind-wiped. This is going to happen so, so, a lot. <laughs> she just overrides yeah, she, people's She kind of just fucks with people's heads a lot, actually. But yeah, so the headmistress is like, hey, what the fuck are you doing? And Molly, fuck you. You're awful and you're going to get punished. Hey. Hey, Molly's not bad. She just said my cooking was good. Oh. Well, then fuck you, too. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, she just screams um, and yells at everybody, and she decides that her childhood friend that she's supposed to be adopted with, Rocky, yes. is now going mm. to be adopted out. Like, she's going to put him up for, like, there's people that are coming in to see kids, and so she's going to try and tra- traffic this child to them. Like, yeah, that's as punishment. How this feels like it's worse. It, it was yeah. punishment to Molly, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, entirely as pu- punishment to Molly. I mean, she, like, she yeah. shoots a look at her and, like, stares at her and goes, like, hey, like, oh, I know who we should adopt next. It should be you, Rocky. And it was like they'd signed some agreement or whatever. They get into that where there was an yeah. agreement that they were supposed to be adopted together because the one nice person at the boarding orphanage place, uh, Miss Thistleberry something? Uh, Trinkleberry. Trinkleberry, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, Miss Dinkleberry. And, yeah, she she confronts the, <laughs> the lady and is like, you said that they were supposed to be adopted together. You're like, you promised them. And she's like, yeah, and I'm now going to punish her and move this child away. As punishment for another kid. This headmistress is miserable, like I said. Oh, yeah. There's so many people that are like that in this movie. And so Miss Trinkleberry, she decides... I I can't say that name without just... Miss Miss Tricksberries. Uh, Yes. She's not for the kids. She's not for the kids because she decides that she's going to stand up and she goes, you can't do this. I'm going to go to the board and they won't let you do this. And so, uh, the headmistress decides to kill her. (laughs) Yeah, so, every headmistress of an orphanage can have little a murderer as a treat, right? (laughs) So, (laughs) she asks her to change a light bulb, and gives her a ladder, and then shoves her down the flight of stairs, and, like, breaks her neck. Yeah. Yeah. Like you do. What a good scene. But she's like, I didn't kill her. She's alive still. (laughs) Probably. uh, Yeah. I mean, they have like a, (laughs) yeah, an ambulance comes and gets them and she's apparently alive. I wanted to bring up something because you mentioned, it just crossed my mind. At, At the same time that this is happening, our thief is trying to break into Molly's room to try and steal the book. Oh, to get the book back. Yes. But he, as he's climbing the wall... The lady, uh, the headmistress is like, oh, you don't need to climb the ladder. Because she's drunk. (laughs) Yeah, she gets fucking lit. And then she just is like, hey, you don't have to climb the ladder to come into my room. It's very forward of you. But the last caretaker just went up the stairs. You can just go up there. And and then he falls off the ladder because, Jesus Christ, who wants (laughs) to go in with this woman? But I, I... I thought, like, so she was playing the joke on him, making him shovel out a bunch of shit. And now she's just like... All right, now that you're done shoveling all that septic sewage, come up here and fuck look, me. <laughs> just... I'm not going to... Look, look. <sighs> I'm not going to kink shame this woman. <laughs> come on. I am. <laughs> I'm going to. Come on. 
You might not, but I will. I'm gonna yuck her yum because it's it's yucky. <laughs> <laughs> Very forward, Mr. Knockman. Got I'm just, you know. The last handyman. Just use the stairs. Uh. Have a sherry. Oh my god. She's gonna murder someone else! <laughs> oh, Jesus geez. Christ. She's gonna bone down with Mary. Apparently. Mary's getting some tail. Was that first breakfast or, or second breakfast? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh. Okay, okay. Uh. So at at this point in the story, Molly has learned some amount of hypnotism. Mm -hmm. And she has realized that she can use it for her own personal benefit by ruining other people's lives. So she's going to abuse it maliciously. <laughs> she is going to just do that. Yeah. Yeah, there's no no reaper no, no inhibitions. Just okay, that's my thing now. So after she's hypnotized the cook and the dog, uh, she goes to the headmistress's room and starts complimenting her about her fashion, mm -hmm. which somehow hypnotizes her. And then she brainwashes her, wipes all of her memory, and makes her think that she's a child. Yes. To the point that she gives her a teddy bear. This is actually a good bit, though. She gives her a teddy bear from the confiscated toys closet. It says, like, a big yeah. label on it. This is confiscated toys. And she goes, you you like this teddy bear. This is your teddy bear now. And, like, gives it to her in this malicious, horrible way. But what's it's funny very about mean. it is that then yeah. there's, like, an orphan that's in this, this really adorable little, like, five-year-old. And, like, the headmistress is going around, like, prancing her in and out of rooms, being childlike. And this little girl's always like, that's my dolly. <laughs> like, really sadly, every time that. The, the, it's not even the room. first. They don't even do it once. They keep bringing no, it up, it's like, great. oh, fuck you, kid. It's mine now. <laughs> and then they keep walking so off, good. like, oh, shit. Yeah, she's like, that's my dolly. And she's like, no, it's my teddy. And then, like, runs away from the little girl yeah. over and over. It's a really good bit. But, oh, man. Just <sighs> demolished. Just Holy fucks shit. With her and destroys her life. And right. So after that, you know. the rap battle comes up. Oh my god! It's at the same time, basically. Uh, yeah. So, because because Rocky is, uh, I guess, going to the talent show with mm -hmm. some of the other orphans that they were talking about earlier, and uh, there's a bunch of random, I guess, random talent show bits like playing banjo, dancing, ballet, whatever. Yeah, they just and do then a like, montage of it, which is... It, and then they go fucking stuff. hard on this rap song. <laughs> they go into this rap battle quite it's, a bit. It's like some insane clown posse shit almost for a moment. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> shut the front door! <laughs> yeah, shut the front door! Like, if it, it, if it was any, any more hardcore, they would say, shut the fuck up in the background! <laughs> Well, that's like, obviously oh, what they're going for, yeah. Yeah, God, uh, these kids rule. It, it was a really good little rap moment, actually. I liked it. And they're the other yeah. orphans. They're like the bad orphans that bully the Molly. Oh, yeah, they were the bullies. Yeah, yeah, they were the bullies of Molly, which is only touched on very briefly. I've got to imagine the book like does a little bit more fleshing out of some of this stuff, and they just kind of go through this real fast. Yeah, they're probably like the... Um... Oh god, what are the Harry Potter equivalent? The the evil team that you get sorted to. It's that, yeah, that crap. Slytherin the Slytherins. Yeah. Basically it's that, right? Except they rap. Yes. Now <laughs> Okay, so Slytherins. If Harry Potter had gangster rap, I think I, I'm... I think it would have been even bigger than it is now. And in my TED talk, we're going to discuss the different Harry Potter rap <laughs> Which house you get sorted into is which is kind of like being on the different coasts of like the U.S. You know how like there's the yeah, big yeah. East Coast versus West Coast rivalry in rap. That's very much like Hufflepuff yeah. and Slytherin. I'm pretty sure. So S S Hufflepuff is like the West Coast of rap, and Slytherin yeah. is like if, if you, East Coast. If you start rapping about having a Glock, you get a, you get to go to Hufflepuff. Mm -hmm. That's how it yeah, works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> 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 god damn it <laughs> at the same time that she's doing like all of this uh hypnotism yeah. on the headmistress lady he mm. was going to the talent show with her 
and it's happening and she forgot about it because the show is actually doing a good job of at this point at least showing that there's repercussions for what she's doing and that she's ignoring her friend right so she's like ignoring mm -hmm. her friend this whole time and because of that she runs over to go to the talent show but she's too late and the talent show's over and he doesn't even go on and perform like he goes on stage but she doesn't show up so he just walks off and leaves and then he goes back to the orphanage and while she's running over to go and see the talent show he meets the people that were there to adopt him and gets adopted and just off he goes by the time that she comes back mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. she's been running back and forth He's already in the car, adopted. That's how it works. <laughs> Don't question it. Was it was quick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, real quick adoption. Goes away, and she, like, sees the car, like, taps on the glass, and he gives her, like, the, fuck you, you didn't even show up to my talent show, and then they drive away, and he's like, I'm adopted now. Okay. I've got a real family. To be fair with Rocky, Molly sucks. Yes. Oh, no. She's, She's a terrible yeah. friend. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I mean, she totally ignored her friends to go and instead ruin the lives of other people which even if this person is a monster which the headmistress is overriding her entire mind is not an appropriate punishment for this <laughs> like so so she what does she do i guess she's running from mary after that right yeah then mary goes, eventually yeah. tries to get the book from her she goes inside and she starts looking over like the book again and he grabs her from behind and she's like oh my god i remember you from the library and then she runs away the dog attacks him because she had like mind controlled mm -hmm. it to like her and he can't deal with this small pug <laughs> this no that demon. that pug is demonic and terrifying as all pugs and are. it might it might even slobber on you and yeah. that's just not okay and then it, it he kind of trips and falls down. The pug runs after her. She decides to put it, put it in a backpack, which is one of the cutest fucking things in this it movie. It is actually cute. It's yeah. amazing. This pug looking out from her backpack's great. And she runs off to London. Well, okay, she runs off to London by wiping the mind of a charter bus driver into letting her onto the bus. Correct, yes. To take her to London. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is correct, yeah. yeah. She, it's, it's the equivalent of stealing... It's the equivalent of carjacking. <laughs> yeah, she carjacks this charter bus. What the fuck? Yep. Yep. So there will be so dire she... consequences for this later, says the movie. Uh, there no, there really wasn't. Dire consequences. So, so after she carjacks this charter bus, she walks into London, goes into a, like, I guess a skyscraper apartment complex, like a big and hotel, also. Yeah also uses her hypnosis powers to steal the penthouse suite for free. Correct. Yes. She she just mind wipes everybody getting her way the whole time into like yep. a five-star presidential suite and all kinds of other things. And and this is all in the service of her looking for her friend Rocky who was sent uh, to London with his new extremely white family. <laughs> I, we didn't mention that Rocky's like not white, I yeah, guess. Yeah, Rocky um, is... I, like, he's a... I, I, like, I don't know for sure what ethnicity he would be, but, like, he, he's not a, a, a white character. Like, he would be probably no. black. Uh, like, I don't know if he's, like, where from mm. exactly. I mean, this is England. But it's important. But, yeah, it is important. That, that he's not white because his adopted parents mm -hmm. whitewashed the shit out of him. <laughs> yes, they do. In really awful ways. Like, he's got, like, an afro, so, and they make him put it back into, like, this slicked-back hairstyle, and they're yelling at him that he's not allowed to play that hip-hop shit around here, kid. Yeah, no breakdancing allowed, kid. Basically, that's kind of what it is. It's I basically... Really... Yeah. And they're, they're, like, trying to feed him soy, milk, and bran, and, like, the most bland white shit you could find basically yeah is what they're they're doing stereotypically like white executive types that don't actually really want a kid they want something that they can bring to parties and be like mm -hmm. hey look this is the the thing that we did as a charitable thing aren't we so nice and great this is the black person i bought yeah 
that is that's in, what they do that's entirely what this is it and it's it sucks to the movie <laughs> to the movie's credit it, it is portrayed as sucky like it's portrayed as being awful like they're mm-hmm. they're kind of shown as being horrible again nobody in this movie really makes out very well like one of the things they also do is uh like they constantly are like Richard, Richard, come downstairs. Like, oh, instead like, of Rocky. Like, like yeah. yeah, his name's They Rocky. whitewash his like, name, yeah, too. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, that's... And it's shown as being awful. Like, to again, to the movie's credit, they're doing all of this, and they're kind of showing that, like, he is increasingly uncomfortable with this, and it sucks. <laughs> and Yes. So she goes and visits him, and he goes, No, I've got a new family now. You can't do this. I, I well, don't want to leave. I, I want to... Roll it back a little bit. Sure. You said she goes and visits him. Mm-hmm. That's not quite true. She stalks him at his house. Yes. <laughs> and then tells him to leave the family that adopted him and go visit her at her cool, swanky penthouse that she stole <laughs> using hypnotism. <laughs> yeah. In, like, a really creepy ex-girlfriend type of way of, like, or boyfriend or whatever. Like, I'm going to stalk you, find where you live, and tell you to come with me. <laughs> yep. Yeah, correct. <laughs> it's gross. I hate it. Oh, yeah, no, Molly is absolutely miserable at this point. She kind of just keeps doing more and more things. So she escalates it to get his attention, where yeah. she... So she's got the altar in her room that's to, to Rocky, that's full of, like, pictures yeah, of Yeah, it's a football candles. with gum and, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, all that kind of stuff. And so she's like, if he won't notice me, I'll make him notice me. And she takes over the li- life of a pop star and destroys her and all of the people around her. That's On her next whim. plan. Yeah. So, because she's watching a TV show and there's a <laughs> Hannah Montana... On television, she's like, I want to do that because I want to be popular and that's things that I want. So I'm going to go to that show where they're doing a TV audition and I'm going to hypnotize the director to throw this actual talented actress out and let me take her spot because fuck everyone else, I guess. Yeah, I get what I want and everybody else needs to just fucking die. (laughs) Yeah, like she's literally a villain. Oh, she yeah. is the villain of this book and the story, and I don't think she's supposed to be. Well, they, I don't know. It's tough. They do an arc for her. We'll get to that. The thing is, they, yeah. they have an arc where she is like this cute little nice orphan thinking of her friends mm-hmm. at home, and then it's supposed to be this thing of as she gets more powerful, she kind of becomes this horrible monster and slowly regains her humanity nearer to the end of the film. <laughs> But it doesn't go far enough because the no. things that she does are too monstrous and the repercussions are not adequate for the crime is basically any, what happens. Any scene in this movie could have ended with someone's brains getting scrambled and blood coming out of their ears. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, Any single scene. Yes. I mean, the, these people, she's kind of, like, she's overwriting their entire personalities and memories a lot of the time, and it's mm-hmm. real bad. Like, so she throws this pop star to the side. In the meantime, like, to emphasize what a horrible, horrible monster she is, uh, she gets a call from the orphanage, and it shows that yeah. they're, like, living in squalor, where, like, even worse than before, because now they're ruled over by a six-year-old, which is yes. even worse than a terrible headmistress, because, like, they don't have any food, and, like, all the cupboards are destroyed, and... Because the cook left to go to Italy to follow her dreams of being yes. Italian. Yeah, they actually bring that <laughs> up. That's not a joke. That's literally oh. what happens. And, like, so they're oh. just living in squalor with, like, broken windows and, like, all the cupboards are thrown about and they're, like, scavenging for food and they're like, can you come home and help us? And she's like, I'm busy being a pop star. Bye. And just hangs up on them, essentially. <laughs> and then she just kind of, for the rest of this part of the film, it's just her going around and becoming more and more famous, right? Like, there's this big uh, Basically, the there's, film. like, an escalation of it. Yeah. Yeah. She is really bad Mm -hmm. at being a pop star. She can't sing. She can't dance. She has no stage presence. Uh, She's just awful, right? So the only only thing she has going is that she she can hypnotize people. So uh, not only does she hypnotize the director, but also the staff, probably the dancers, etc. Really, when you think about the scale of the thing, it's all very devious and diabolical. Oh, yeah. So, So 
there's she realizes of people she... that she's like wiping to yeah. be her loyal servants and give her things. So she realizes she sucks, and she is about to do her live show, and she's like, "Oh fuck." <laughs> Everybody on television is going to see I suck ass at this. So I need to find the page in my hypnosis book that tells me how to hypnotize a lot of people at once because there's no way they're going to think I'm good. So obviously I need to do this instead of just, you know, not. Mm -hmm. Uh, So she sets up a magnifying glass on the show, which is actually a good shot. It's a really good Uh, shot. uh, It's almost like a fisheye lens. Really well. Like really, really well. It, It looks great. Which amplifies her hypnosis, and she hypnotizes everybody who watches the show, except for DS guy, who is playing on his Nintendo DS XL, and he's like, what the fuck is everybody doing? I'm sitting here playing, like, Metroid Pinball, and now everybody's watching this fucking terrible show? (laughs) I'm going back to my DS. (laughs) <laughs> this is a really good scene like you're underselling how yeah. good this scene is in a lot of ways because it's not done like we i want to emphasize because normally we watch movies and like they're shot mm. horribly this is great they have this back and forth of her doing like this really big wonderful show and the dancers carrying her and she's like holding a note where it's like oh and it does that for like five minutes kind of thing like it's a ridiculously long note and he like pulls out his uh headphones and looks up from his ds and it shows her doing this long note and she's like (laughs) she's like it does like this back and forth over and over of like her just like tripping over herself as he watches it and then like this incredible show for everybody else that's hypnotized it's very solid what the fuck? <laughs> it's just funny. It's funny that he goes back to his gaming, though. I'm yeah. Like, oh, I'm out. <laughs> well, well, that's the thing. At home, you might be thinking, yeah. this is never going to work. Everybody would realize that she's yeah. shit. But then when you think about it, it's like all of the teen boys going like, oh my god, this Hannah Montana knockoff sucks shit. It's it, not it's any literally different reality. than what real yeah. life is anyways. So it's like, well, there you go. It's 100% accurate. Like, yeah. yeah. So, so she's successful in doing that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, at the same time, uh, Mary is still trying to get the book from Molly. Yes. Uh, our, our hobbit has taken a trip from uh, their home all the way to Mount Mortar. No, that's Pokemon. <laughs> he needs, well, what he needs to do is he needs to steal the gold from Smog, also known yeah. as the bank. And to do that, he needs the power of hypnotism, the power of hypnotism. Yeah, and then throw it into the volcano. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, during this time, he's also making steampunk goggles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he makes okay. goggles so that okay. she can't hypnotize him. Now, his mom on a Zoom meeting uh, is talking to it's him about, about, yes. yeah. about robbing the robbers who are about to rob a bank using hypnotism. Because she saw Hannah Montana Molly on television and was like, this is great. I think it'll work. Yeah, she understands because he went and phoned her earlier and was like, yep. I, I'm going to become the greatest criminal in the world, Mom. You'll see because I'm going to steal this child that has a hypnosis book. And she goes, are you on acid Whatever. again? Are you on <laughs> but <laughs> you But it's child. important because as she's coming up with this plan, we got fucking Rick rolled. <laughs> Oh, God, I forgot. In the year I of our Lord, God. 2020, we got Rickroll. On purpose. This show did it on purpose. Fucking Christ. It, it very literally goes, it shows a game show before she switches the channel to Molly. She's on watching a game show where they go, what will Rick Astley never do? <laughs> Fucking assholes. <laughs> Fucking jerks. I can't Jesus believe it. Shit. Things that Rick Astley is <laughs> never gonna do? No! <laughs> <laughs> we got, got us, movie. Fuck! <laughs> they got us so good. They got, they got us they so got good. Us way too good. It's brilliant and it <sighs> sucks. So the greatest crime was, that was ever pulled was done there, and then they talk about robbing the bank. <laughs> yeah, so. okay, okay. So they're setting up the end of the film, is the point. Mm-hmm. Um, so Rocky needs to leave his awful family that's gentrificating him, uh, which he does. 
Yeah, and he now he's away. an orphan he again away. because legally he doesn't. No, actually, he's still legally. You know what? It's fine. <laughs> he ran away. <laughs> Don't worry. Molly can just mind wipe them later. <laughs> She does to yeah. everybody. She can literally just scramble their brains and say, you did not get this orphan at all. And also, stop being so fucking white. And Jesus racist. Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Extreme Jesus racist. Um, okay, so, but she is done with her big show. Uh, the entire world got hypnotized, or at least whoever was not playing Nintendo DS at the time. And she is really upset because she tricked them all and she feels like she's cheated and she's not actually making any sort of progress in life based on her own merits, which is a hundred percent true. I was going to say, and that's, that is correct. Yes. That, thank you. Uh, At least again, the movie is doing a decent job at this point of showing that there are consequences for this and that she shouldn't have been doing it. Um, cause, well, because yeah. she's an evil, terrible person, and that means the heroes of the story are actually the Hannah Montana that she fucked over, who's trying to stop her, yes. and Mary from Lord of the Rings, the Hobbit, making a trek across the world <laughs> so to stop the evil that is Molly. <laughs> Hannah Montana and the Hobbit break into her room to try and steal the book. Yes! And they fight over it. And he falls out the window. There's a really good scene of him hanging mm-hmm. from, like, one of the balconies with, like, the the slotted metal mm-hmm. things. And mm-hmm. he's just kind of hanging on that. A security guard steps on his fingers. And then, of course, he falls. Uh, sh- the Hannah Montana is hiding under a table, though, with the book. And mm-hmm. she confronts Molly when Molly comes back. And Molly goes, nope, you're right, I'm a horrible monster. She takes the book, leaves. This is kind of her arc now where she's realized that this was all wrong. She walks out of the room and she tells the director that he should instead hire back Hannah Montana. And that Correct. Hannah Montana needs to be a better person. Molly, you have no right to say this. <laughs> but, and, and then after yeah. that, Rocky meets back up with her. And she tells him that she did all this stuff with hypnotism. And Rocky's like, oh, you should keep doing that. That's a really good idea. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah everything is where you did was things... totally justified and correct, actually. This is where the movie just starts to really come apart at the seams. Because up to this <laughs> like, point, what? it was like, okay, this kind of makes sense. But then he's like, oh, is that what you've been doing? Wow, that was really nice of you to do all of that stuff for me and you. And it's like, mm, was it really? So then she gets kidnapped by Glasses Guy. Uh, because he Hobbit. kidnapped her dog. Because he kidnaps the dog. Yeah. Yes, right. Yep. This is where the dog matters. He, The dog right. is essentially the princess in every video game. Right. I forgot that finally comes up. Yeah. yeah. The only reason the dog is in the story is so that it drives her to walk down a dark alley to a park so she can get abducted into a van. That's the old plot point. That's it. A dog that she didn't like at the start of the movie. That she doesn't even own, technically. No. She stole it from the orphanage. That she stole from the, the headmistress. But that doesn't matter anyways, because the headmistress is totally mind wiped. Look, anyway. she steals a lot of stuff, and there's not really any repercussions for it. Because you can just do things, apparently. There, they, there are... Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so he abducts her and tells her to help him with the robbery of the bank robbers which she does uh and how okay how does she rob these robbers i actually want you to describe the scene a little bit because it's fucking weird (laughs) there's a bunch of this she when she gets hypnosis powers she gets powers over everything and i mean Mm -hmm. like space time because when she hypnotizes the director too she's in the stands and she walks into the room and he's like what are you doing here you're not allowed to be here and she's like oh sorry and then he turns around and she's behind him like she, she teleported 500 feet and she yeah, does the, the same fuck? thing here where the robbers try to leave the bank and she's in front of the van looking like fucking Carrie or Damon from The Omen. And they're like, holy shit, what's this demon child? So they slam on the brakes and they look at each other. And then she's out the window. Like, she just warps to the side of the, the truck again and instantly hypnotizes them. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. instead of saying, shoot that nasty hobbit man, he's got me kidnapped. <laughs> she Yeah, she could have just murdered Mary. Yeah. She cold blood. instead decides, no, 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 I'm better than that. 
which she is absolutely not. Um, and, and she and decided. You might that, also. Yeah. Well, you might also him. ask yourself, why didn't she just hypnotize Mary? Well, that's because he was wearing steampunk goggles. Well, yeah, he's got the steampunk goggles, yeah. so that it stops. That's... It stops all hypnotism. Mm-hmm. Closing yeah. your eyes or having sunglasses is enough to just stop the hypnotism. Or playing the Nintendo <laughs> Playing the Nintendo DS. <laughs> Buy a DS. It helps with hypnosis. I can't believe Nintendo had marketing and Molly moved. <laughs> but she, so she gets them to, to steal the, the truck and dry, drive it where he wants. He sticks her in a cage and he's like, oh, well, she's like, oh, I thought that you were going to help me. He's like, nah, fuck that. I'm going to betray you now. And then she's, he's like, oh my, she's like, oh my God, I can't believe that you did that. As he's like, haha, I've now betrayed her and I will get this safe open. He opens up the back of the truck and it's like locked by a, a um, iris scan. And yeah. as he's sitting there puzzling over it, then he gets betrayed by his own mother, who was with the original was, robbers, actually. was banging the bank robbers. Yes, she was literally banging the bank robbers. And so his hubris gets him. He goes, oh, God, my hubris! And immediately is thrown into the jail pen kind of thing that they have with her. Yeah. And the whole reason why this happens is because, boiks. Uh, because they wanted to use Molly to hypnotize the iris lock. Yep. <laughs> Which, okay. Yes. Which she does. It works. Yep. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, she, she hypnotizes the iris lock so that they can get into all of the jewels in the back of this armored car. Whatever. <laughs> I, I mean, care. I'm kind of okay with it. It's very stupid, but it's a kid's book. Like, it's kind of, yeah. I'm like, so, all right, whatever, fine. So Rocky shows up because he rode on top of the truck on the way there, holding on for dear fucking life, going at highway speeds. Yeah. And, yeah. and he moves a couple mirrors around in, like, the warehouse that they're in. And then Molly uses her powers of hypnotism to bounce off of four separate mirrors through a pair of binoculars to hypnotize the iris lock again into closing when they're in the back of the van and locking the two criminals within. This one Which is this one is even harder wild. for me to believe because like the iris lock okay. I'm I might be there with her to that she it gives her incredible hacking powers. But the door doesn't just close again, right? Like, it just <laughs> closes. Anyway, so they're now trapped in the back of the van. And yep. he goes up to her and he goes, Oh, by the way, they took their sunglasses off. So then it yeah, shows and then she her mind wipes fucking them, right? mind wipes them. So she's like, oh yeah, this is the perfect time for me to give them a fate worse than death. Yeah. <laughs> and just, like, totally destroys all of their mind and memories and leaves them as helpless dolls. It's an awful story about vengeance. This whole movie, this whole movie is about vengeance. Yeah. And, and irresponsible behavior... And destroying people's lives, and that's our hero. This small what? child has gotten infinite power, and with it, she is going to have no responsibility. <laughs> she is uh. she is going to use it to make everybody that crosses her path wish they were dead. Except they can't yes. wish they were dead because they don't have any of their personality anymore. <laughs> so, so she's now friends with Mary from Lord of the Rings, and Gandalf, and Frodo... And all of the hobbits. <laughs> and, and she Gimli. tells them to go off and, and have fun and <laughs> yeah. enjoy the rest of their lives. And he does. He just hops away as yeah. the hobbits and do. That's his yeah. exit from this film. He just leaves at this point. She just goes, well, goes that was really nice. You should be better. And yeah. he goes off to a better movie in New Zealand right after this. Oh, my God. And then after that, she goes back to the orphanage because she finally realized that she's an awful, terrible person and she left all of her friends there and didn't help any of them. And she steals a bunch of money using hypnotism to buy gifts for them all, which is questionable. Uh, and Not as then... questionable as destroying their minds. <laughs> yeah, and then the headmistress is all like, oh, uh, I'm going to go on vacation for a bit, but I forgot to give you this thing. Um which I'm going to do now because I didn't earn this at all as a plot point in the film. So uh, here's here's a note from your mom saying that she loved you and a locket and you weren't just abandoned 
Uh, bye. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, the headmistress sleep. is magically unhypnotized, and Whatever. but now she's like devastated and horrified because her whole life is yes. ruined because yes, yes that's what you did to her you you did this molly moon you you did this and it, it it's done where she's like this is a growth moment for her I it guess. isn't though it, it, there's no, no arc for this woman like it's she's a horrible awful monster then she gets turned into a child, and then she's just magically a nice person who's decided that she's going to mend her ways. Yes. That's it. Those are, so, there's three things, and there's no, like, connecting line between any of them. Yeah. So Trinkleberry's back from the dead and is running the orphanage. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Molly goes back to the library where she originally found the book. And the librarian is like, oh, I meant for you to find that book. Yeah, the librarian, who's got a nice name tag on her uh, chest that says Beelzebub, uh, yeah. goes, yeah. I, I, I give this book to those I deem worthy and let's, and see what chaos they sow out into the world. I, yeah, and it, was, it wasn't the hypnotism, <laughs> it wasn't the yeah. hypnotism that made you special. No, the powers you used for evil were not what made you special. It was the darkness in your heart. <laughs> that was you the whole time. You always had this capacity to be a monster, Molly Moon. And then that's <laughs> how it ends. That. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Molly sucks and she's terrible. That's the movie. <laughs> she mind-crushed somebody else on the way there, too. I can't remember. There was someone else that she totally mind-wiped. That I Because mm. it was the two criminals, and she mind-wipes them and leaves them. It just locked uh, I guess, up there. like, there were people at the hotel she mind-wiped. No, but there was some... I can't remember. There was another person. It doesn't matter. It was something that was, like... It was a very, t- a, like, toss-away kind of scene where she yeah. totally crushes somebody else's mind also. Where And, like, she leaves the, the uh, woman that was making soup for them. She, like, yeah. makes her lose all memory and just love Italy... And that's just never... She just leaves her like that. She just leaves her in Italy. She just has her travel there and leaves her there. This movie should have ended with a bucket of blood landing on Money, Molly Moon. And then her just killing an entire room. Yes. And then everybody having to yeah. stop her. Yeah. Because she's a monster. It really felt like it was escalating to that level. Because the stuff that she does is so beyond what her punishment, quote-unquote, is for it. Because her punishment for it is to go back to the orphanage with all of her friends and now have a great life and a wonderful Christmas. Yeah, it was Christmas. Oh, this is a Christmas movie. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Wait, does Mary get Christmas? I have I, to assume I so, right? He's, he's just let, let go. <laughs> um, okay, so... It ends on, like, a freeze frame of her zooming in on, or, like, the camera zooming in on her face and her eyes glowing green, which is supposed to be, like, whoa, there's magic inside everyone, but it's more threatening, it is <laughs> considering the consequences of what happened. That. Yeah. It, it's like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. She still has the powers to just mind wipe anyone she that's fucking not good. chooses. That's not good. Which, yeah, that seems real bad. Like, it felt like when she returned the book, it was reversed at first because, like, the, yeah. the headmistress got her mind back, but apparently They implied not. it. No. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, she has, she's mutated into a person who can use hypnotism to do whatever she wants. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, in the next couple books, she also learns how to do time travel, and she can also read your mind. And morph into anyone that she chooses. And also play any musical instrument. Correct. The last book... The, this is not a joke. This is real. No, We're not joking is... here. This is what happens in the next couple stories. Yes. The uh, end of the series, this is the synopsis for it, which is, Molly has developed even more amazing powers in the sixth and final hypnotic installment of the New York Times bestselling Molly Moon series. Molly Moon can hypnotize or morph into anyone she chooses, travel through time, read minds, and now, thanks to a mysterious and magical coin, she can play every instrument. The harmonica, the guitar, the drums, the piano, you name it. But will Molly be able to free herself from the coin's powers to save her friends? And herself? 
I feel like the coin's the hero, musical... right? Yeah, because <laughs> it's stopping it this like child with infinite powers that's throwing people out into the cornfield, a la Twilight Zone. <laughs> like, oh, you won't like... play with me? Go to the cornfield. I'm gonna mind wipe oh, you. No, <laughs> it's that it's and, that. And like, on top of that, time travel and mind reading, and then playing. You playing musical instruments that's a step fucking down hello yeah the finale of her powers Please? is that she can play every instrument okay whatever i don't give a shit oh my god this is such a wild thing this movie this is was such a weird so movie. strange it has such a great idea for a plot like the idea of some of the stuff actually works like when Mm-hmm. When we were going through the movie before she makes her turn back to good and it just doesn't do enough, it feels like, like, because it kind of goes into, like, oh, well, she should have never done this. It felt like she should have, like, revoked all of her powers and then, like, solved mm-hmm. the problem, uh, like, the final problem of them breaking into the safe. Like, her getting out of that situation, it feels like it should have been done without hypnosis, Right. Like, she should have cleverly yes. made her way out of it and then been like, oh, like, I didn't need hypnosis. I'm a smart, clever girl all on my own. I don't need to do this. And, like, basically end it with her, like, giving the book back and showing that all of the hypnosis is undone and she revoking, like, those powers kind of thing. And that's kind of what it's setting up and it feels like it's going there and then it just doesn't. And it just says, like, no, it's cool. She's fine to just do this. And it's like... No, no, she's not. Like, it just feels so unearned and awful at the end because of it. The moral of the story is supposed to be that you're strong without needing some sort of magic mumbo-jumbo. However, the moral of the movie is that using that magic mumbo-jumbo is completely justified and nothing bad will ever happen to you. (laughs) So just do it. She's now got infinite power and no one can stop her Fuck you, it doesn't matter. She's got infinite power. How can you stop her? <laughs> this this is almost like There's the no origin consequence story if of, you have infinite of power. Magneto. This is the Magneto story. That's what this is. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. she's gonna start an orphanage of of evil mutant children that try to take over the world and kill humanity. Basically, yeah, she just does whatever the fuck she wants at this point. She can just mind crush anyone she feels like at any time. And she does it willy-nilly. Like I said, there's a bunch of people that she just wipes their minds entirely and leaves them there, like, grinning to themselves and twiddling their thumbs. And she's like, all right, that seems good, and just walks away. And you're like, uh... And, like, at the end of the film... That's not undone. Like, it's just still there. Those people are still like that. Like... Those bank robbers were bad people. The headmistress is a bad person. You can't just destroy their entire mind. That's worse than murder. It's worse than murder. She gives them fates worse than death. (laughs) I have have a thought experiment. If you replace any moment in this movie where she used hypnotism with her holding a gun to their head, is there a difference? No. 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 It's the same (laughs) situation. It's it's literally the same. (laughs) Molly Moon and the incredible power of an AK-47. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the fucking story, though. That's how they wrote it. Yes, yes. I and at the end, it. she, at the end, they're like, oh, you should probably unload that AK-47, Molly. And then they're like, and then she goes, well, yeah. but I'm trapped in this cage. How will I ever get out? And he goes, well, actually, what you need to do, Mary goes, here, no, 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 see, because she goes, they're too far away. I can't see them. And he goes, here, I have a sniper scope for you. Now you can get them and pop them both off right it's at the same time. It's not even a sniper scope. It's that she learned the power of ricochet. <laughs> well, but that's what I mean. But, well, but also, yeah. like, like, they're too far away. Here you go. I'll help you get, like, because he gives her the binoculars. Yeah. It's like, I'll yeah. put a scope on your gun, and the other kid will help you ricochet the bullet, and you can just kill both of them at the same time. Perfect. It's Problem the same. solved. There we go. You learned how not to use that AK-47 by murdering those people with that AK-47. Good for you, Molly. What a weird story. It's fucking this... strange. I don't get So it seemed like they knew. They knew that it was bad. They have a whole arc for it. And then at the end of it, they're just like, "Well, toss that out. We need to have her have hypnosis for the next movie." <laughs> yeah. So, here's a good question for you actually. <gasps> um and this is going to relate into why I think this movie got made. So, what are 
okay, here, what is, like, one of the top two publishers out there for profit? Um, that could be like comic publishers, book like publishers. Books? Scholastic, right? Yeah. yeah, is what you're saying. Scholastic. Yeah. It's the same with comics. Mm-hmm. If you look at graphic novels, out of the top ten selling graphic novels of any year, six to seven of them are all going to be Scholastic. Wow. This is a Scholastic series. Mm-hmm. And there are six books, which means that they thought this was going to be fucking huge. <laughs> so they made a movie on it and they got a bunch of talent. And the problem is the book fucking has a horrible message (laughs) but it's scholastic right so it's sold that's all that matters right Um, yeah that makes me wonder like what i read from the scholastic book fair was it actually good i don't remember like did it tell me the same awful things i don't very possibly i it's it's weird it it feels like there was no marketing for this either like there's no the, the budget for the movie had to be pretty high. The special effects and, like, stage production stuff is all fantastic. It's shot really well. There's really good cinematography. There's, like, great actors. And, like, the writing in it is actually quite good, except for that end. Like, like individual scenes are written really well. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, there's a little bit about, like, that's my teddy. Like, things like that that are really, really funny. Like, there's some great moments in there. Fucking Rick Astley shit. And it's, like there's there's stuff like that that's in it, but they just kind of can't salvage that the ending just undermines the whole point of the movie. And I just don't I don't know. Like I never heard of this film though. Like with all of that budget stuff, I'd never heard of this. I've never heard of this movie. And like it feels like nobody did. Like there's no real theatrical release for it. If you look up Molly Moon on like Google, it immediately goes to Molly Moon's homemade ice cream because they told cops to leave their guns outside. Hell in, yeah! Which, hell yeah! Fuck yeah! That's a good Molly. See, there's a good Molly Moon somewhere. I, I'm it's gonna not tell you this one thing. Movie, but not only does Molly Moon have good ice cream, but they also know a cab. Which mm, mm. fucking Molly Moons? You gotta stop by Molly Moons. This is Molly Moons. Please sponsor us. <laughs> They Molly have Moon's a dog Capitol on their Hill ice cream shop. Molly Moon's also has a dog for their logo, and I'm just saying. Uh, you know, just saying. I could use some ice cream. I could use some ice cream. <laughs> so let's rate the dog. Petulia has uh, quite an adventure in this. She gets hypnotized and kidnapped and goes she has to a London. Show. She has. I was gonna. Yeah. Oh man! See, that was the thing. All right, I want to rate Petulia a doggy magazine cover out of ten. Yeah. They like have a, a cool wonderful dog magazine out of ten. Yeah, of yeah. Turn, a sat- Satan costume, which is a subtle hint that you know Molly worships the devil. Yes, as we know, the mm-hmm. librarian Beelzebub, who tempts mm-hmm. her with the book, <laughs> and all kinds of like caterpillar costumes. They have her in They're like cute. yeah, a ton of different costumes, and then on a magazine cover. There's a not a lot of dog in this film, but there's there's a fair bit. Like they they pull her in a couple times where Molly has like a heart to heart with Petulia like I don't think I'm doing the right thing she isn't and she sucks yeah she she kind of has like a little heart to heart with the the dog about it just talking to herself and working out her feelings kind of thing when she decides that she shouldn't be evil anymore and then immediately goes back to being evil yeah I I would rate Petula a the movie is sagging let's cut to the dog out of 10 Yes, every time the movie had yeah. a moment of, like, uh-oh, we don't quite know where to go. Oh, Petulia, yeah, look, dog fashion show, ha-ha. Yeah, dog in a backpack, dog in a backpack. Oh, man, <laughs> dog in a backpack, though, is, that's that a was really cute. good moment. It's cute. a good moment. Especially pugs have, like, those stupid bulging mm-hmm. eyes, and it's, mm-hmm. like, these, like, these big fucking eyes just peering out from, like, the bottom of a covered-over backpack. Mm, mm, that's the good mm-hmm. shit. Uh, I would rate Mary a Fuck to Mordor God. out of ten. <laughs> I'm not rating Ma- Mary's not a dog. <laughs> Mary's not a dog. Hobbits are dogs. It he's counts. A, <sighs> he's a hobbit and a good boy. He learns at the end of this film not to be a robber anymore. And unlike Molly, he takes that to heart and stops being a monster. He, he has way more of an arc than Molly does. He he has he takes it to heart better than she does. Yeah. He actually listens to the moral of the story and decides to stop being a criminal. Uh, speaking of which, you want to go hypnotize some people and do some crime? Fuck yeah, let's go. <laughs>
if you do like the podcast, uh, it does help us a lot. If you share us out on like Twitter, uh, we are at Rough Cuts Podcast. Um, you can always check us out there. You can obviously, or sorry, Rough Cuts Cast. You can always yes. send us an email, roughcutscast at gmail.com as well. And uh, you can find us anywhere that you can find podcasts, you know, Spotify or Podbean or a bunch of different places. But thank you very much for listening, and we will see you again soon. My teddy. Teddy's mine now. Get wrecked!